Hello! Uh, welcome once again to Love Some Workshop. Now all going well. We are live. And today we're, uh, yeah, we're doing something that's very much right up our street where we're combining the scroll saw and the hand carving skills together. So that's the plan with this one is to is to use you know our our hand carving skills as well as our scroll sawing skills together and all going well um yeah we'll have the two things working together just looking so far that's looking a little bit are we okay there uh, it looks a little i just check in see if we're okay i think we're okay if you can put it in the comment section if it's not right if it's yeah if it's a bit thing just just let us know but what I'm going to do, um, I'm demonstrating today making this Christmas decoration, this one is. And you can see it's, it's a Santa-themed Christmas decoration. And we're going to show you then the process of making it. So the ones we showed you last week, you had the, um, the, the main skill. It was, it was working on the scroll saw. As you can see what I've done then, we've done our usual little trick where we've screwed the two pieces of wood together and to start off we've got to drill our holes so that's the first thing that I'm gonna do you notice I've drilled this first one the reason for that we've got our two pieces of wood so we're gonna make two at the same time that one I've done on the pillar drill it's more accurate we know that it's, it's gonna go straight with these internal cuts we've got a little bit of leeway so a little bit of error on, on the drilling won't make too much difference. Ideally, we get it straight, but it doesn't matter too much. So using the hand drill, helps, helps if we go in the right way. We're just gonna do our holes drilling for where we're gonna do our internal cuts. Yeah, so we've got those ones done. We've got three more to do. Yep. That's my fault where I'm not holding it where I should be. There we are. And then... That's it. We've got one more. Just like so. So that's the first little part of the process is to drill all of our internal cuts, basically drilling them in preparation for doing our internal cuts. Now I'm gonna turn it over because where we've drilled through, you're gonna have little ridges and I'm just gonna, just gonna sand those just to try and flatten those back off. Reason that I'm doing that is to get it to lie flat on the scroll saw bed. So that is gonna make life a little bit easier for, for the actual scroll sawing. Here we are, we just flatten those back off, just sanding them down like so. Here we are, we've got Thomas Woodcarver joining us. After it, well, evening, Thomas Woodcarver. Here we are, so you can just see, we just flattened that off. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go across to the scroll saw. I'll turn that microphone down again. Same, same reason as we've done uh, before that we, we're gonna turn that down is because the noise isn't particularly pleasant. I'm also gonna have to refocus the, the camera then onto the scroll saw itself. The process I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do all of my internal cuts first. The reason I'm gonna do that is because you can see we've got the two pieces of wood secured together with the screws. And when I, uh, when I do the, the, the cutting out around the outline, those two pieces of wood eventually are gonna, are gonna come apart. So do your internal cuts first, then do the external cuts. So bear with me, give me a moment, I'm just gonna set up the scroll saw. Two seconds. There we are, we'll have to explain the process a little bit as we, as we set up. It's, it's basically, when we're, when we're looking um, to do this, oh, we've got a good afternoon there from Midnight Joker. Good afternoon. Uh, there we are. Right, now I'm just going to get that just about there. So, hopefully, 
I'm going to refocus it. You could go possibly higher there and then down. No, if you're watching this, I think, I think that that is, let's have a little look. I'm just going to adjust it into the center like so. You'll have to let us know in the comments section. I think we're pretty good in terms of focus. Hopefully so. So I'm going to turn it down and then I'm going to jump on the scroll saw and demonstrate. There we are. I think it's about as good as we can get it. Sorry there, we've just lost the, uh, lost the sound there. So we should be back on and we just refocus that camera. So let's get some phone back there, please. Yeah, that'll be fine, that'll be fine. Right, so bear with me as we get onto the scroll saw. There we are. So we've got that lined up. As you can see, we fed it into the blade just like so. So we're going to be working on those internal cuts. Just get that little block out of the way, because that's going to distract it. Yes, no problem. There we are. Yeah, the sound has gone low. It's basically... There we are. Now that'll bring the sound back up again. Reason we put the sound low, it's the, it's the noise of the machine. Because it's not a very nice noise, we, we keep that sound sort of low when we're working on the machine. So it's, 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 it's not that we've lost sound. When we go onto the wood carving, so you can see we've just done our first internal cut on there. When we go onto the wood carving, I'll turn the volume back up so you'll be able to hear what we're explaining as we're going along. It's just that noise of the machine can be quite distracting. And the fact you haven't got the machine absolutely fixed to the floor. That's right. That's creating more vibration. What it is, when we do our live streams, we, we move the machine around so we, we unstrap it from the floor. Now, an interesting thing, 
I've shown this before. As you may have noticed as I was demonstrating that first cut, um, the bottom piece was causing me a problem. So to get rid of that problem, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that piece out of there. We don't need it in place at this moment in time. And that will allow those internal cuts as I'm doing it, they will drop down into, uh, into, into the gap there. So I'm just gonna, can you? So the volume will have gone down again, but we'll turn it back up in a minute. Problem. Right. Let's, let's turn that to, to just the volume, dude. Just, you just go one, two on the bottom there. There we are. So we turn the volume back up. Oh, I don't trust me to do that. Right. So we we've done our two. Um, we've done our first two internal cuts. Could I just? Yeah. And Thomas I, Woodcarver's got a point he would right. like to make. I, I noticed something. It jumped as Dave was cutting it. It jumped when it came to the final cut. No. Yeah. To avoid that, if you had, um, if I can get my pencil, or in this case my Well, pen. what I should have done, to be honest with you, um, the piece of wood, it was too big, so instead of it dropping down the hole, the reason it didn't do yeah. that is I should have cut it in half. Exactly. So it, it would have made pencil it slightly come easier. In there. Yeah, so if I'd, have cut, if I'd have cut the block in half, it would have dropped down more easily. Yeah. Um, but... So I thought I carry on. I carry on doing it. It's little and often. Yeah, that's right. So if you want to avoid that, yeah, that's exactly how you can do it. Right, we're just going to turn that down again, and we're going to continue, and I'm going to do all of those internal cuts for you to see. Sorry, um, I've, I've got to stop there because 
I've got to say that this is this is classic Thomas the Woodcarver <laughs> because as I'm trying to cut this out, I, I just realised what Thomas the Woodcarver is done. Is we, we called it a Christmas special. If you just come and if you just come and see, yeah. And, and unfortunately, what he was explaining um, with the line was a very good I idea. But but also, you've actually turned my Santa. He's now doing a dirty protest. <laughs> So I'm, I'm sorry, I had to stop there because I just realised what you've actually done in terms of drawing. <laughs> so that's why I stopped because I was laughing. And, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So well, it, it was unintentional. An unintentional protest by by Santa. There we are. So uh, yeah, it gives you an idea for how you can cut down there. But uh, I get my composure back and and continue scroll story.
I know. Okay, so we've done all of our internal cuts. The problem we had, we had a block of wood. If anyone who noticed it, we had a block of wood that just refused to come off the blade. So that made life a little bit more difficult for us, but we've done all of our internal cuts. So to finish off with our scroll sawing, we're gonna do now our external cuts. So that's gonna be our finishing bit. I would do that top one first. On the scroll saw. Cause you've got that funny little twist for hanging the I just noticed as well, we've got a little line in there the where we're gonna, where we're gonna um, just take out, there's just a little scroll saw line left in there, so we get rid of that at the same time. I get the shellac. Okay, so there we are. You can see we're now finished with cutting our outline. And there's a few little bits, there's a little line there that I would go back over and cut out. But now we've got it to that stage, uh, we're ready for, for doing some hand carving. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reposition our camera and I'm gonna focus it in so you'll be able to see the process of how we hand carve the Santa. We use the, the scroll saw and the, the hand carving in a combination together. Um, and so, um, you know, that basically, that allows us to, to, to get all, you know, to get a, a more interesting effect. Um, again, we, we always say this depends on your sort of preference. You can combine the skills. Uh, it's, it's what you are sort of comfortable with. That's the most important thing. If you're not comfortable with, with doing hand carving, Stick to your scroll sawing. Let's have a little look. Have we got it in focus? Yeah, we just got to straighten them up a little bit. Just going to straighten our camera up just a little bit. Hopefully, there we are. We should be, yeah, let us know. Let us know in the comments so we, uh, are we back in focus set. Right, now we've got that. Um, yeah, let us know, is, is that back in focus? Hopefully so. Now we've got that one in there we can start the process of, of carving. I'm gonna check as well 
yeah, we've got our microphone turned up as well. So basically, when it comes to the hand carving, you're working in uh, sort of layers. You're working out which parts of the carving you're gonna bring out, which parts you're gonna push back. So we started off with his feet, with the boots, and it's, it's sort of creating the effect, it's creating like almost like a 3D type effect, but you're only working in uh, two dimensions. We're just working on the feet to start and the hands as well. I've just mentioned there, you put the two pieces underneath, the reason why. The Yeah, you'll see, we've got the blocks. There are two blocks underneath. What that means is, is the pressure. If I didn't have a block under there and I started carving there, it'll sort of flip out of the, of the vice. It can be a bit sort of unnerving. Um, and it, 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 it sort of, if you do use a mallet, those blocks of wood, they're, they're taking the pressure uh, from it. What I'm doing there, that is just where there was a scroll saw line left. It's the only one that I can see on there. So I just take it out quickly uh, just to get rid of it, basically. Those of you interested in the tools who are new, who haven't seen what we do before, we work with vintage uh, gouges. The ones I'm working with here, these are Herring Brothers. The wood that I'm working with is a piece... All right, Dave, the internet has gone. The, the wood that I'm working, I haven't had any reports of any problems, so um, the everything looks fine here. Can you go and check on another device, Yelly? Sorry about that, it's just Yelly's telling me there's, there's a problem, but I can't see anything um, as it stands. It all seems fine. The wood that I'm using is a piece of mahogany. A uh, nice piece of mahogany, this one here for for carving. That's why I've I've selected it. An easy an easy piece of wood for for doing the the the, the hand carving. So you can see we're working on the belt of our Santa because that will be raised. That will be brought out as the other parts will be sort of pushed back. There we go. So we just do the top of the belt as well. Yeah, the clothes will be sort of pushed behind and the, the belt will be brought out. So I'm gonna do a lot of what are referred to as stop cuts, so that's cutting down into the wood. For those of you interested then, you know, in the only the scroll saw, and that's where you can get to just using the scroll saw, and then afterwards we're on to the, um, the, the, the hand carving section, the hand carving part of the process. So there we are, we're just gonna work on that moustache, just okay, like so. Um, no, use use a telephone so it's not on the yeah, it's Wi-Fi. Yeah, he hasn't got a connection, you see. Right, so um, as you can see, we're going to work on getting the shapes of his beard. Um, so again, it's doing those stop cuts. Once we've got all of our stop cuts done, Perhaps phone is flat. I think so, did. There we go. It's these sort of bits of frills. They will be brought out in the carving and then the other parts of the, the main sort of suit, that will be pushed back in the carving. And that's a big part of the process when you're doing, you know, when you're learning carving, which bits are you gonna push back and which bits are you going to bring out? That's the decisions that you're, that you're making. So examples of that, the, the, the moustache, the beard tends to be a little bit more proud as the the uh, mouth tends to be pushed back a little bit further. There we go. So again, we're gonna work on that mouth and that'll be the first, first little bit, just to demonstrate for you to see, that'll be the first little bit of the carving that we're gonna push right back. By combining, see, the, the skills of wood carving and uh, scroll saw in the scroll saw gives you that basic profile to work from and then the the hand carving gives it that extra flair so you get your basis using your scroll saw to work from it certainly makes it easier for us when it comes to the hand carving there we are. Has, she, has she tried it on her yeah it's fine yeah I thought so um, so you can see we're just, just about completing where the, the depth that we want. 
And these are the judgments then that you're making when you're doing the hand carving. You're judging what sort of depth you want on the different features, the different parts of the carving itself. We also then, we, we'll do the tongue just sticking out a little bit. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a cartoon style Santa, this one. And afterwards, the idea, see, it'll be, uh, it'll be hung on the, uh, the Christmas tree. It is based on the real Santa, right? It is, it is indeed based upon the real, the real Santa. There we are. So if my boys are watching, yeah, he's, we, we, we're basing it on the, the real one. And I hope everybody's got their, their letters in. Because you'll be visiting soon. So as you can see as well, the grain with this one, we try to mark it out as close to being vertical. Oh, there's some comments on there if you want to have a little look for me, dude. Okay. Um, yeah, we've marked it out with as close to a vertical grain as possible, but it's just slightly, just slightly an angle. Um, Lawrence Orange, hi Midnight, hi Tommy, hi Yolanda. Oh yeah. Hello everybody. Hi Lawrence. Really nice to have you with us for our for our scroll saw and wood carving demonstration. Hope the uh, the little bits where we're going back and forth between the, the, the machine and the hand carving hope that didn't take too long to to sort of do that process. Next year I'm getting on to a slightly different camera that should help with those sorts of things. We got some in there. Uh... Landa, sorry I misspelled your name. There we are. And Tommy Dunn says, hi Larry. Hello everybody. So you can see we're still working on those stop cuts. I, I think we need to get Yolanda in here, you know. There we are. Are you there, Yolanda? Well, I'm hoping at the end of this, I'm hoping that Yelly will do a little job for me because I'm hoping that she's going to put the tassel so you can see what it'll look like when it's hung on the uh, the Christmas tree. So we're just working now. Now this is probably the most delicate part of the carving. And the reason for that is ideally that hand, ideally I would prefer to have that arm attached to something. But the only way I could have done that would have been to scroll saw in and out. But ideally I, I would prefer it attached to something because it adds that extra strength. But in this case, because of the way I've done it, I, I decided it would be okay um, to leave it like that. But the, the sort of perfect scenario would be to leave that attached to something. Because when it comes to wood carving and working in wood, you're always looking to, to leave it with that extra strength. So, let's finish off shaping. We've got the shape of his nose. That's just going to come in like so. I'm going to carve around the outline of the eyes now over uh, over the next few weeks we got some different um, different videos coming up as well we would uh, we've been looking at we've been looking at one I know we're with the other side of Christmas at the moment but we'll be getting one of our Valentine's ones out in the new year um, at the start of January and um, we've got some different project ideas for the scroll saw. And as always, our projects tend to be geared towards um, you making a simpler version where you can use just the scroll saw and then a slightly more complex version where you can use the hand carving skills as well. So now we start to see the shape of the Santa coming out. We can see... What I'm doing, as I'm doing the stop cuts, I'm working out, right, that I'm going to push behind that, that I'm going to bring out. I'm making decisions as I'm going um, where I actually, where I want to go with the carving, basically. So which bits do I want to leave proud? Which bits do I want to push back? So for instance, the hand here, I've decided then that we're going to push that back because the hand goes inside um, the glove. So this sort of wrist piece That'll be a bit more proud, and the hand is going into it. So those are the sort of decisions that we're constantly making. And sometimes you'll, you'll decide to push part of the carving back, and then you'll look at it and you'll decide, no, that's wrong. I, I don't think that's right. And then you'll go back over it, carve the whole thing deeper to carve it out, and change change the bits 
that you, you sort of pushed back and, and brought out. Are you going to say something, Dick? Oh, you, you explained the, what timber you're using, you? Yeah, we're using a little piece of mahogany. Um, it's recycled mahogany, this one. So, yeah, for anyone looking, you know, in terms of sourcing wood, that's where we get a lot of our timber from. I chose it because I thought it would be a nice easy piece of wood for, for carving in. That, that was the uh, the thought process. If you explain that we had a visit from a good friend from Chanel. Oh yeah, that, that was good. And for any of you, um, I don't know if there's somebody's put a comment on oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, we had um, our friend from Llanelli. Uh He came down. It's always great to see uh, Peter because Peter brings us uh, wood. So he brought us down uh, some old, he brought us down a door uh, window frames, door frames, all sorts of different things that he brought us down, and they're all mahoganies. I knows he's getting basically out of um, out of the skip with a with a company nearby nearby his where where he's from, and that's fantastic yeah. because we we can we can use all of that wood, really nice stuff for for working Did in you as well. It was from windows. Yeah, windows, it, we, there was a door in there. A lot of people are putting in new <laughs> plastic windows. That's right. And of course, uh, from the 60s onwards, they, those people who were fortunate enough to have hardwood windows, yeah. a lot of the timber in them uh, was mahogany. That's right. Especially the sills. And uh, this week we had a visit from Peter and he delivered some- He brought um, in all sorts. Lovely mahogany to us. Yeah, he did. So yeah. it was an early, it was an early Christmas present for us. I got a message from Lawrence. He just subscribed to your channel. So oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. Glad you, glad you joined us here, and uh, thank you for subscribing. Because um, yeah, it always, it always helps us out, and it's, uh, it's, it's always good if we can grow the channel. We can do more. We're always looking to do more videos, and we're always looking to share more ideas, and we got plans for sharing a lot of different things. Now at the moment you may be looking at this one as well and thinking that's too proud. So that's that was my thought on it was that these wrist pieces at the moment they are too proud so they need to be pushed back a little bit further. The suit itself I'm going to bring it behind the beard. So that is going to go behind it and there's a ruffle. This piece here is going to be raised what would you call that? It's like a, it's like a fur, isn't it? The white, because you have the red and white suit. It's the white part of the suit where that goes in front um, of the rest of the suit. So it's a little bit more proud. Here we are. So we're just going along that ruffle, just like so. And that belt, that will actually be more proud than, than the two parts. So all of that will go behind the belt because that belt Holds it, holds his suit together, and uh, well, it's interesting what keeps his belly from, in. From uh, Lawrence, yeah, uh, he says, if I put one of those in a vice, yeah, I would crush it. Right. So, um, yeah. Have you got Have you got wood pieces? There we are. Interesting one for people to know. Um, the vice, you can see, we've got wooden, we got wooden protectors either side, and that's that's basically. Um, but he, he is right. If you put too much pressure on that, yeah. So, um, a well, little suggestion. There's a couple of things as well. When when it comes to it, when I mentioned this, when you design, if you design it with too much space here, when it does push in like that, yeah, yeah. it'll it'll make that horrible that horrible rattle um, where where the the wood will split. So yeah, you you, you are right. What would you say with them? Um, well, you you know you could. Um, Possibly. You can use a clamp. That's another way yeah, you can go. A, a clamp on a on a flat bench. Yeah, you can do. You know, a G clamp or a one of these. Um, I don't know what do you call these things there. Um, like a wolf clamp, they wolf, call that. Wolf yeah, clamp. where they yeah. they got like a quick release. Yeah. On them. One of those, and you can. Um, but yeah, but what what it is is that you know you've got that wood against the wood instead of the, the metal um, squeezing it. So that that helps, um, but it's it's it comes down a bit to the design because I've designed it where we got this piece here supporting it, so that protects it a little bit. We're in the UK as well. Somebody asked us, are we in the UK? Yes. West Wales. West Wales. Yeah, we've just been um, we've just been locked down until we don't know when, isn't it? So we're 
we, 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 I yeah, don't know what the yeah. rules are now. Our workshop's been closed again. Yeah. So um, the miserable lot of. So so pro possibly um, your your earlier drawing of the the protest of Santa was was appropriate for today. Yeah. But yeah, we we've just been locked down um, for the how many times have we been locked down in Wales now? Oh, um, I, I'm not sure. But there we are. Uh, yeah. Such is life. We can continue. We're very fortunate to be honest, with you, because um, we live on site, so we can continue. We can continue doing what we. Um, well, it sounds as if I'm saying we can continue doing our work, but the thing is, is, is we enjoy doing what we're doing. We, 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 we love doing our wood carving. So, having access to the workshop throughout everything, it's 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 a, been a a really good thing for us because it's not a, an easy time, difficult time for everybody, and um, we're fortunate that we can continue doing something that we really do enjoy. You, you're going to ask something else? No, they're saying, we, you know, some, some of them are explaining to one another, we, we're Welsh. Yeah. Yeah. Hence the, 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 the slightly strange accents. But uh, interestingly enough, the company we live, Pembrokeshire, they is known as Little England. Yeah, that's Beyond right. Wales. Yeah. So, um... So this, the history of this area is slightly different. Yeah. But this isn't the area you're from, is it? So... No, you grew I, up in I, another I, part I, of Wales. I'm actually from South Wales. Yeah, we're in, we're in West Wales and Dad is from further along what they call the M4 corridor. And we've got one gentleman here uh, from the USA, Mississippi. Ah, brilliant. Oh, it's great to know where everybody's from and things. And um, yeah, it's fantastic for, fantastic to, to be able to share what we do, to share the, the process that we use and to share ideas. Somebody gave me, and I've, I'm, I do apologise straight away because um, somebody gave me a fantastic idea um, this this week. Uh, that was when I was they were they were saying about using what are the drill bits they referred to as? It's basically to make the scroll saw a little bit easier. That's why it's great with having you know where this we're sort of developing with the community on I YouTube. I, 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 I can remember that bit. The cutters, you know the cutters that we got in the back there? Oh, yeah. It's, it was a little yeah. idea that they had. Yeah. So, for instance, um, like do you want to grab Do you want to do you want to grab one of those? To to we, we, Dad will go and get one of those, and I'll explain to you because for those of you interested in the scroll sawing, this was a useful little tip that we were we were given. If you get a small one, did okay. here we go. You'll see this one now. It's a good little tip. Um, just to make life a little bit easier. It would have made my life easier earlier on in this demonstration, but I forgot. I don't know what you meant. Yeah, so basically what they were saying um, is to, to make life a little bit easier. We were doing a demonstration of cutting out the three wise men. Basically, if you use those cutters, because you've got a bigger hole before you start, it just makes the scroll saw in. A bit tight for that one there, but you can, you can cut out using a cutter like those, and it just makes life a little bit easier for the yeah. scroll saw in. So... Another little useful hint that somebody gave us, and we, we're passing on to yourselves. So judge the, judge the project and what you sort of think, and whether you think you would benefit from using something like that in certain situations. So many techniques and methods that you can use, you know, that there's always something, there's always something new to learn, there's always something different you can think of. Just going to refocus two seconds, just like so. I don't know if somebody just, there's a few more comments on there that might be questions and things that, it's great as well. That's why we do the, the our demonstrations a little bit later in the day for us here, because we know there's, it's great to have you all from the US joining us. We really do appreciate it. It's great to be able to share the work we do and the tradition and that sort of thing. Was there a comment on there, dude? Well, we got one here. I thought it was Barry. That was Little England. Barry, no, you're up in um, where you are. There, Barry, Barry is. Would have been the old company. Would have been Glamorgan. Yeah, your Morganshire. Yeah, which is close to where Dad is is from. And perhaps that's where. I'm wondering, would that possibly be that program? But Gavin and Stacey. Gavin and Stacey, Gavin yeah. Gavin and Stacey was filmed in Barry, and so maybe that's where you've got a bit of a... 
Yeah, cro a crossover. There we are. So, you can start to see our Santa is taking shape. We got a little bit of work because the main thing I want that I want that beard nice and proud, and I want the belt that suit to be tucking in behind the belt. But I don't want that. I don't like that line there. It's a little bit. That little line is a bit ugly. So we take that one out. I've noticed as well that we still haven't we still haven't had an appearance from Yelly. People were asking about Yelly. Yeah, we'll, we'll get Yelly in here, so hopefully. We, we're hoping that Yelly will come in and finish this off for us because um, yeah, she does she does the, the Christmas decorations. She she puts the, the finishing touches. So hopefully I wouldn't say this is a commercial item though, do you? Um no, it's it's a it's a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, you know, the problem with doing something like this. If you were gonna, th if somebody was thinking of selling these, the difficulty in terms of selling something like this, this is a bit of fun that I'll probably end up sort of hanging on our own tree. Um, there's too much carving involved. There's too much time involved in it. That's why it's our Christmas special. The demonstration that we did last week with the um, the Christmas, the simple Christmas tree ones, those are more realistic. Uh, in in terms of them being a commercial item. If you wanted to make a carving like this more practical commercially, I would make it bigger yeah. and then possibly combine it with something like a clock or, um, you know, combine it with something, uh, a plaque or... We've got, we've got an interesting comment here, Dave. Um, yeah. Just realised yeah. that you've made an extra wide inner jaw on your vice to give you working room. Right? This one? Uh, yeah, and it says, could you guys send me a friend request on Facebook as well? So, the... Yes, send, send us a, send on, on Facebook, uh, search for the Love Spoon Workshop. Um, I'm Di Thomas on, on Facebook, so by all means, yeah, it'll yeah. be... Uh, you could explain the reason for, because... Right, yeah, years ago, um, we're, Get it, get in on for sort of 10 years ago, um, once upon a time, I was, I was involved in athletics. I certainly wouldn't say I was a good athlete. I would say I was a bad athlete. But um, I, I was interested in sprinting and finding out how fast I could run. Um, and I kept on having problems with my hamstring. And I went to a physio and he basically, he helped me out um, a lot. And he sorted out the problems I was getting. And one of the biggest things is when I was working, uh, I would be closing off the one side of my back. So I'd be twisting That's and... Right. So the reason that I added that block is because it straightens me up. If you're, if you're twisting, you're sort of closing off the one side of your back and that is not good. You know, it's, it's just basically that piece, that block of wood on my inside, that improves my posture when I'm carving and it, it allows me to carve for longer and physically um, it's better. He also, he also, well, between us, we worked out that it was better for me to sit down to carve as well. So that's why we've adapted the the vice is to get my back square on. So you're not you're not like the the back is designed to bend, it's designed to twist. It's just not designed to bend and twist at the same time. So that was the logic, you know, that was the sort of logic that we had behind that. I think there's another another comment on there from a. Have a little check. I wanted you to send a friend request, please. Yeah. I'm not used to trying to send requests. Right. So, I'll, I'll, you'll, you'll have a look at that later, won't you? Yeah, I, I, the problem is I won't, I won't see it from the live stream. Do you want to take a note of the... Um, do you want to take a note of the details? Because um, I, won't, I won't see that before the... What do you want, then? End of the, the, the name Mark there. Lawrence. That's fine. There we are. So what I'm doing now, the eyes, I just want to take down a little bit. So you take the eyes down just a little bit like so. So again, it's working on those layers, working on the depth, that sort of thing. Um, and by doing that, it just, it just gives it an extra dimension. It gives it a more a more interesting appearance to the carving. There we are. Uh, there we are. No, 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 that's it, there, there, that's it. Okay, that's yeah, that's great. Want, yeah, that's fine. There we are. So, 
I'm going to finish off now the eyes. We're just going to use a spike to do two full stops so that our Santa is just, he's just looking over to the one side. There we are. A bradol would be the norm. What's that for? We've got an, the back end of a file. Yeah, we use the back end of a file. Any old uh, methods that we can sort of come up with. Right, I'm going to push this beard down and the face down a little bit. Just like so. And now I'm starting to look where have I sort of missed out? What bits have we not done? So we're starting to get towards the end of our carving. I think the nose needs a little bit of shaping as well. I think at the moment he's got a little bit of a, a wonky nose, but that's all right. There we are. We're just going to take off the top of that bit there as well. And it's a nice process, nice material to work in. Um, you can see it's it's a, nothing too sort of complicated. It's working on those different layers. For the gentleman concerned about squashing it as well in the vice, you can see there's a little wobble. It hasn't got a lot of pressure on it. No, that's right. We, you don't want to be sort of squeezing it. If I, if I sort of, if I turned it in the vice another two times, there's a very good chance that we go and split it. Yeah. Um, but we don't do that. So you're, you're, you're almost thinking. ready for uh, shellacking, Dave. Yeah, I am. I'm going to put. There's a few little details I want to do. I want to turn it round, and I just want to. Blow the stuff from underneath the first. There we stuff are. Yeah, don't worry, because we're not going to be carving this way for too long. And a lot of it comes down to, as well, um, the amount of pressure that you are actually using. Excuse me. One thing we always do, because we work mainly in a vice, when we're designing, we design all sorts of bespoke spoons for people. And when we're designing them, we always sort of look at the design to give it strength. So we design them in a way where they're going to be practical for us to make. And that's something that you've always got to think of in wood. Whatever you're working on, it needs to be it needs to be practical for the material that we're all using. Right, just a little bit on that arm there. I got a little bit on that belt. So just on the uh, what do you call that? The buckle? Yeah. The buckle of the belt. So we're just working on the buckle of the belt. Also want to just bring this this little bit of fur that bit's just got to come down a little bit. Um, this side of the buckle as well. Any other questions as well when it comes to the wood carving and things like that, let us know. And um, yeah, we're always delighted to be able to help out. And any ideas and any thoughts on what we've done? Another thing I'm going to do. Just an answer. No, we've never used a carving vise like the record power one. So we've not used that one. Um, we have. There are some other aids that um, we can show you later on. A, re a record? What's that one? Well, do you remember I got one that you can... Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of different vices. I, what I would say on, on different ideas and different ways of holding it and things like that, um, it's what's comfortable to you. I've sort of grown up around it, and this is the vice that I've used from early on, um, and it's what I've had access to. So a lot of the methods and the things that we do, it's not, uh, you, you, you'll have to forgive us on certain things because we don't sort of, we, we, we're not ones who, who've sort of spent a lot of time looking at lots of different equipment and things like that. Um, we tend to adapt and use what we've got really, don't we? Um, but, you know, yeah, there's definitely other methods. And other... I mean, we mainly concentrate on the Welsh love spoon. That's right. And over the years, you know, it's like we get asked, we do a lot of scroll sawing. And I, we do do a lot of scroll sawing through our, our sort of daily, daily work. And we get asked about different scroll saws. The, the truth of it is, is years ago we had, for instance, the Delta and we tried stuff like that. But we realised pretty quickly that those were not really that great, were they? Not for yeah. us, not for us using them on a daily basis. So we, we just went straight into buying a Hegner and that's done, that's done a really nice job for us. Now, finishing off here, I'm just adding tiny little bits of detail. The reason I'm adding a little bit of detail, that's just to give it a little bit of flair to, 
to the carving. So we're just going to put a little, a little buckle there on the shoe. Um, I'm going to do a similar sort of one on the front of this shoe, but because his shoes are in different positions, slightly differently. And I'm just looking through the carving. Have we got anywhere else? Now we're getting closer to where we need Yully in here, aren't we? Yeah, somebody says their eyes are getting worse, so they have to have the work raised up. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's right, you, and, and the other Lana says adapt and overcome. And that's, exactly, that's, that's yeah. It. Yeah, and a lot of it, because you know, we get asked about, oh, do I need to be buying this? Do we need this equipment and things like this? Um, you know, sometimes an improvement in equipment can make a difference to your work. Quite often, the, the actual key to it uh, you know, and we're all different, but the key I usually find is that you just need to spend more time doing certain things. Yeah, and it's all down to the, the time you have, the, um, the market you've got. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... Uh, no, I'm just doing... Again, this is an optional thing. It's, it's, it's um, as well. Yeah, that's right. This is an optional thing. Some people will frown on this, but we're sanding. The grain is going that way. You may have noticed when I started sanding, I was going the wrong way because I didn't check the grain properly. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So now I've checked the, the direction of that grain. It's just going di diagonally. Uh, there's one last little line that I want to do is just on his belt, just a little, little bit like so. And I reckon, what do you reckon, dude? Do you want to swap over and you come and shellac it? Yeah. Okay. There we are. Dad's going to put a, a coat of shellac on there now. That's Yoli, that's for you all to see how that, how that's going to come up. If you get Yolly as well. well I, I'll give a shout through the thing. Yolly, if you can come in and you can put the... Um, oh, sorry. The, the, the shellac on. is over there. Sorry. Oh, he's going to go and look for the shellac. What I will also do as well for you all, I think just put a coat of shellac on the top. We'll turn it round in the vise so you can all then see... How that looks. Right, so I'm going to check the comments as well, see if we missed anything. Um, yeah, that no yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right as well. Just notice some of the other comments on there. Yeah, you're right in terms of the pricing. When it's hand carved, that's the problem you do get with sort of hand carved stuff. Um, is is getting the the price for the work that you you put in? Yeah, it can be it can be really difficult. That's why if I was doing a carving with this intricacy, for instance, I could put that on a love spoon and, and you, could, you could work that into the cost, the price of the spoon. Um, but it can be really difficult. You, that's why yeah, we always think the, of different the ideas of it. Um, you know, that you can use. To, to sort of make money from. That just sharpens the, um, sharpens that's the, the first coat. It'll raise the green, we'll rub that down. And well, then second coat, maybe a third coat. Well, it looks like, unfortunately for our Christmas special, it looks like Yolly's going to be a no-show. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Where's Yolly gone? Um, I don't know. Oh, shall I go? I've, I've, missed a, I've missed one thing. I right. just noticed on this one. I will get Yolly now. Here we are. I have just noticed there was one little cut that I didn't do. Didn't do his, his tongue. Because he's a cartoon Santa, we just want a little bit of that, that detail there. So there we are. We just added. We've added his tongue. There we go. That's... That's how you can have a little go at um, carving a, a cartoon Santa. What, what we would do for... Now, Yelly's just turned up, but she's holding the phone. So if you could turn the phone off. Shall I the phone? If, if you take because of the volume, I, I that's all. There we are. Right, so what we basically do is we put a tassel through, just like so. There we are. So that would be for hanging on, on the tree. Um, Yelly's here now. Do you want to say Feliz Navidad to everyone? Happy Christmas, everyone. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> there we are. And that's our demonstration. There we are. For everybody who's supported oh. us over the, oh. over, the last, <laughs> over the last year, thank you for that. And... Um, Happy Christmas. Hope you've all enjoyed. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're back.